that's handy this morning, and I'm going to show you some other scripture all, as we go along this morning. Ready? Uh, Joshua chapter number 3, please. Joshua chapter 3 and verse number 5. Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5. He told these people here, God's going to fix and do something great. So here's what I need you to do. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. That grabbed me the other day, just in my Bible reading, I was in Joshua. And, uh, and the Lord said, now, I'm going to do something really, really great, and really, really special. But before I do, I need you to sanctify yourselves. I'm going to, this morning, as, <coughs> excuse me, an under-shepherd, that's what a pastor is. A pastor's not a dictator, he's a, a shepherd, he's a leader. So he's a shepherd, he follows, you follow him as, as he follows God, that's what the Bible teaches. And I'm going to lead our church this morning, and I hope you'll go with me, into 40 days of sanctifying ourselves. And that's what I'm going to preach on, 40 days to sanctify ourselves. 40 days from tomorrow will be the biggest, most important event we have in the whole year. I noticed that in the Old Testament, we're not talking about some kind of Catholic Lent, some kind of junk like that where you don't eat chocolate for a few weeks and then everybody gets drunk. And so I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about biblical sanctification. And you notice the Bible said sanctify yourself. You don't come and say, Lord, sanctify me. Uh, I need what sanctification means. Let's say, uh, let me take uh, one of these song books right here. Um, now, there's a bunch of these in this room here this morning. There's a bunch of these song books like this. And I, if I got up here and I said, um, all right, everybody get your song book. Let's all stand, sing. You did it. Kids get it. Everybody be looking at it, flipping through it like this right here. But let's just say I took this one right here and I said, um, uh, piano only. This will be for our piano, Miss Desi. And I said, the only one, do not remove. And I took this song book and I set it over here and said, nobody else, nobody can touch this one. You use the ones out there. This one right here is set apart for her only. That is exactly the Bible definition of sanctification. It's, it don't mean you fall out on the floor and turn a flip, something like that. And, and if you fall on the floor and turn a flip for the Lord, I don't care. But, but that's not sanctification. Sanctification is not even praying necessarily. You pray during it. Sanctification is taking something and says, this can't be used for nothing but this for, uh, from now on or for this certain amount of time. That's what I'd like for me to do. That's what I'd like for you to do. I have no doubt in my mind there's a lot of people sitting in here this morning will not, will not it's going to make one bit of difference in your life. And that's discouraging as a preacher. When you preach and preach and scream your head off and people just go right on and do the very, what you ask people not to do it and they do it anyway. You preach hard, don't do it and they do it anyway. That's discouraging. But thank God there's always some. There's always some that say, you know what, preacher? You're telling the truth. That's what God said. Count us in. Let's get this done. Let's do this for God. I know, I know. Some of y'all saying, oh, Lord, here we go. That's right, here we go. And we ought to thank God we get to go. That's right, we should. I had men tell me, oh, please don't do that, Brother Danny. I hate, I hate living right. Basically, that's what he's saying. Uh, listen, y'all, what are you going to do in heaven? Play video games? I don't think so. Amen. Uh, listen, brother, uh, we, we, need, we need once in a while, like they did in the Old Testament, to jerk up on it a little bit. Once in a while in the Old Testament, they had these feasts, they had these certain days, and they said, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that, and they, they just jerked up on it a little bit, get a grip. Sometimes, sometimes if you're um, cutting a tree down or you're running any kind of machinery or anything, you, you stop, step back for a minute, spit on your hands or something, and, and grab it again and say, all right, 
Now, that's what we're going to do this morning. That's what I'd like to do this morning, and it's going to hurt my feelings if you don't go with me, uh, but I'm going to go anyway. By the grace of God, I have to go by myself. So you, 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 you're going to answer to God for what you're getting ready to hear. I'm going to preach about us sanctifying ourselves for 40 days. I am in no way implying that after the 40 days you get back. I'm not implying that at all. I'm just saying for 40 days, let's jerk up on it a little bit. And all God people said, God knows we need it, buddy. God, we are on the brink of World War III. This world this morning is sitting on a powder keg. Life as we know it could change overnight in this country, in this country, brother. Well, there's crazy people all over this world that would love to just stir up, have it and kill off half the population right now this morning. If there's ever been a time when God's people ought to turn from our wicked ways and seek the Lord and for our kids, you know what's wrong with our kids? They need God. You know what's wrong with our families? They need God. The Lord's the answer to all of our problems, y'all. And that's what I'm trying to do. It's on my heart so heavy, it feels like the weight of this pulpit is on it this morning. I want to say this morning, I want to say three things, I believe. Uh, maybe, maybe three. First of all, let's jerk up on it for 40 days, pull back from worldly desires. Worldly desires. Let me tell you something this morning. You can sit there all you want to and say, uh, well, we're not, we don't want to be a legalist. And you don't, you sit, run your jaws all you want to. But I'm going to tell you what God said in this book. He said in 1 John 2, 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in. Now, you can like it, lump it, try to explain it away, claim you're saved by grace and everything else, but God still, I ain't talking about salvation. I'm talking about where a Christian ought to live. We're not talking about trying to get to heaven. We're talking about how Christians ought to live while we're on our way to heaven. I love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. You hate that, don't you? Some of you people hear this on the radio and on the internet. You just hate, you just, you just despise that. Now, I'm going to tell you what got us in this mess. 30, 40 years ago, a lot of Baptists went too far and were so strict it was absolutely sickening. And they made up a bunch of rules that God didn't ever make up and they made people do this knew that if you didn't look a certain way or act a certain way or go a certain place you couldn't be right with God now all that was a bunch of junk and a few years ago a lot of people started getting their eyes open and they said hey well, we ain't living like we, we ain't gonna live by a bunch of man made rules and that was good but what happened we swung so far back the other way and said well we're saved by grace so ain't no use needing trying and both those views are wrong both, both those views are unscriptural. Well, being saved by grace is a Bible doctrine. You never met nobody believing men saved by grace no more than I do. But I'm going to tell you something. Because we are saved by grace, we ought to act right, do right, stay apart from this world. You ought not to act like, look like, dress like, talk like, go to the same places as the world does. That Bible said, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. You know why there ain't no power in most churches? You know why there's absolutely no conviction in most churches here? That, come on, people. You know why? Because the people don't care about sin no more. You can live any old way, do any old thing you want to, and it don't matter. Good old God loves us all anyway, and we're all saved here. Now, good God does love us, but God still hates sin, and the book still says, love not the world. You say, Brother Daniel, what's the world? All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Back when that was written, there wasn't no TV. Back when that was written, there wasn't no internet. But it's the world system, the way of thinking, the way of acting, the way of believing, the morals, the standards of the world. God said, don't love the world. We, by nature... Get backslid. Little by little, you get backslid. We sort of, you can get on the altar, you can get right with God, you can say, Lord, I'm going to do the best I can, I'm going to serve you and everything. That's great. I do it all the time too. But if you'll note, little by little, you start getting back a little bit. And little by little, you start getting back a little bit. Little by little. About that time, some preacher like me come along, bam, flocks upside the head with the word of God. You're like, whoa. 
I didn't realize how far backslid I was. And I go to the altar and I get right with the Lord. That's exactly what I'm talking about. We ought to sanctify ourselves in, from worldly desires. Amen. I'm, I'm so sick of it. He said, well, you Baptists are a bunch of legalists. Uh, listen, you, you're so dumb, you don't even know the definition of a legalist. You want me to give you the definition of a legalist? According to Galatians chapter 5, where the Bible said you, a person falls from grace. That is a person trying to justify themselves by doing the works of the law. The biblical definition of a legalist is somebody who's trying to obtain God's favor by keeping the law. Nothing, I don't know anybody in here believes that's somebody, something that dumb. Well, it's got nothing to do with God's favor or his, our salvation. I'm not talking about being saved. Well, I'm talking about how we ought to act after we are saved. I'm not talking about how to get to heaven. I'm talking about how to live. Well, here's what the Bible says. Come out from among them. Who is them? Them. Uh, people out there in the world living wicked. And be ye separate, saith the Lord. Listen, people. We cannot, we cannot tolerate sin in our lives or in others' lives and expect God's power to be upon us. I'm, I'm not talking about a bunch of man-made junk. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking about being morally pure, sexually pure, uh, uh, honest in our dealings, telling the truth, acting right. I mean, just plain old everyday 101, do what's right. Sanctify yourself. That's right, brother. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about, uh, I'm, I'm talking about don't let the TV tell you how to live. Don't let a talk show tell you how to conduct your, live your married life. And for God's sake, don't let a rap group or a rock group uh, determine how you act, how you dress, where you go, what you do. I mean, don't be a, a Christian does something stupid enough to take their little girl to see Jojo Siwa. And, uh, how in the world can anybody? I'd be that dumb. You say, well, they're going to get mad. Well, you better get in line. You ain't the first one to get mad at me. But you, you know good and well that's right. People, what's wrong with us? She's a lesbian teaching all them little girls to grow up. What kind of an evil spirit you think's in a place like that? I know some of you get your feelings hurt. You say, Brother Danny, why are you so mad? Brother Danny is right. He's trying to help you. God, you want God to bless your life? You want God to get your bless? Get it right, brother. Get it right with God. Get it right with God. Amen. It's just normal stuff. Normal stuff. If you, I, are you like me? I catch myself. You know, when I really get on fire for the Lord and I really get a touch from the Lord, I, everywhere, everybody I look, I think, I wonder if they're saved. I wonder if they're, and I try to get my track. I think like that. And when I start thinking different from that, sometimes I say, you backslid, Danny. No, I'm not. I ain't done nothing wrong. I say, yeah, you are too. Remember how you used to care about sinners? And that? The other day, I was going down that road over yonder where he turned down from McDonald's over yonder on, uh, on, uh, on uh, Carbon City Road uh, where the old church used to be going down to Ingalls, and I was going down through there, and it was one of them pretty days, I had the sunroof open, and I was enjoying that sunshine, and there was an, a van come over on me, and I'm telling you, it, it was coming over there and it hit me. I slammed on my brakes, hit them hard, and it was like there's a, the guardrail was right here, and this old van was coming right here, and I went, bam, slammed on my brakes, and they cut right in front of me, and I looked, and this old van's from New York, oh, well, that the way, that's the way the hell I have to drive up there to get in and out places. And I thought, good night, y'all. You crazy? You drunk? Watch it. And I went in to pull in the angles, and they pulled in right in front of me. And there's an old man and old woman. And uh, you know what I thought? I didn't think like I should think. Bless their heart. They're probably Catholic and lost and all that. And I, tried, I thought, I ought to run them off the road. You almost hit my forerunner, dude. That's I, something come up in me and said, "Y'all just can you not drive?" That's what most people do, isn't it? They follow me in the parking lot. What's wrong with you? You know, that ain't no way a Christian's supposed to act. You say, "Well, if he hits you, still ain't no way for a Christian to act." I've hit people before, and lo and behold, <laughs> lo and behold, I go in the store and there they come. And my flesh says, tell them how to watch where they're going. And you know what I've done? I 
pushed my buggy over in front of the store. They'd have to look at me. And I said, how y'all doing today? And that lady said, fine, do you know where the restroom is? I said, well, maybe that's what I'm wrong with. I, I said, cut, flying out. And I said, and I said, did y'all know Jesus loves you and he's the best friend? I don't know where the restroom is. I said, do you know the Lord loves you and he's the best friend you've got in this world? And she looked at me like, thank you. I didn't say, fool, what's, can't you drive? You, you know, that don't do no good. That don't do no good, y'all. Thank God I said the right thing even if I didn't feel it. <laughs> but I worry about myself when I don't feel it. I worry. Do you ever check up on yourself? Do you ever just act any old way? You say, Boy, if that had been my husband, he'd have fallen in there. You know, your husband needs a trip to the altar. He'll hit somebody one day and he'll beg for mercy and ain't going to get none. Amen. I'm just talking about regular stuff like that. I ain't talking about getting drunk. Y'all, you're going to do that anyway, some of you. I hope not. I'm just kidding. You got a brain you want. If you got a brain you want, but if the devil's got your brain, you might do that. I'm going to say number two. Number two, sanctify yourself. Let's sanctify ourselves. Start tomorrow. <laughs> you got one day. No, I'm just kidding. Start tomorrow. Wasting time. Wasting time. Do things. Be patient. Time in prayer. I'm talking about prayer. I'm talking about prayer. I'm talking about praying. How long has it been since you prayed? I'm not talking about, oh, let's all get in here and get the music going. I'm, you know, I, now, nowadays, nowadays about all you see in churches on TV is this, they call it this happy, clappy, rock the flock, <laughs> jam for the lamb sort of a service you have nowadays. That's a bunch of junk, amen. That's a bunch of junk, brother. Lord, have mercy. Whatever happened to brethren, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all your power while we try to preach the word? All is vain unless the spirit of the Holy One comes down. Brethren, pray in holy manna. We'll be showered all around. Listen, y'all, I'd love to see holy manna shower down over there at the youth. I'd love to see it. How long has it been? How long has it been since you talk with the Lord. How long has it been since you got down on your prayer knees and got out and said, dear God, and you felt his presence so strong that you didn't want to stop and you kept praying and you felt victory when you got up. I'm talking about, listen, let's bear down. Let's get back in the prayer closet. Let's hit our knees 40 days from tomorrow that God will shower holy manna. Time in prayer as opposed to researching all the time. So you think you're serving God by researching all the time, everything, Googling everything? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I research too. I'm not saying it's wrong. How about spending some time in prayer, buddy? How about on our knees? Saying, God help my kids. God help. You know what the Bible said about prayer? It says we wrestle. This is not biblical praying. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, I pray that you bless my mom and daddy and bless my uncle and the kids and bless my little missionaries on the foreign film. Bless the praise of my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Get the car and lay. That ain't praying. That's reciting a prayer. That's like, now lay me down to sleep. Sermon's long, subject's deep, you know. If he should quit before I wake, get me up with a gentle shake. That's, that's, that's that kind of praying. That's your Baptist prayer right there. Listen, I'm talking about pouring your heart out to God. I'm talking about, listen, I'm talking about ladies getting a burden for our kids and, and getting in the prayer room and, and, and having lady, men, having men's prayer meetings. How long has it been since you heard of a church having an all-night prayer meeting? Name me one, name me one. I'm not trying to be ugly. It's been a long time since we had one. But it's about, don't y'all think it's about time? Don't you think about time we jerked up on this flesh a little bit and said, look, we quit petting you. We give it everything it wants. You live in luxury. You eat four times a day. You got an air-conditioned car with leather seats in it and a nice house, a nice bed. It ain't going to kill us to give up something a little bit for God once in a while. Amen. Might make you be better, nicer to your wife. If you'd pray <laughs> or your husband, amen. Might you never know. Do something with your wife and family, brother. Don't be so hateful. You know why your husband's hateful? He needs to spend time in prayer and get right with God. You know why your wife's such a grouch? <laughs> Y'all are awful. You have an evil mind. 
Uh, uh, you know why? Because, because, <laughs> because she don't spend no time with the Lord. She stays on the phone all the time and won't get her heart right with God. Listen, you can't get mad at God, people, no matter what happens. You're going to point your finger at God and say, why did God do you better? You better watch your mouth what you better do and say every bad thing comes from the devil. Every good thing I've got comes from God. God's been good to me. I'm going to straighten up and do right. Amen. Amen. Oh, you heard about that man. You know, you, you ain't supposed to let not the sun go down on your wrath. You know, if you're fussing and fighting, you're supposed to get right before you go to sleep. I mean, at least you don't talk. No! Would you like to pray? I'll do my own praying. Shut up. He ain't going to listen to you no way. That ain't the way you're supposed to go to bed. That's right, really. You're supposed to say, look, I know. I'm sorry. Have you ever have you ever grabbed your wife's hand? And everything in you, say, just like me with that man and woman cutting you off. You know good and well they're in the wrong. And say, Lord, forgive us. <laughs> I mean, and, and we all hear about that guy. So about that guy said to him and his wife got in a big fight one night. And, and you know, you can't sleep good when it's like that. You go to bed mad. Your heart ain't right. And, and he's, he's, he's turning back and forth. He couldn't sleep. And he, he's rolling back and forth. And he, and he thought he'd back in Vietnam. And, and he's going through these weeds and briars. And he's grabbing the hand, throws a hand grenade and throws it. Boom! And there's a hand grenade and throws it. Boom! Pulling out these hand grenades. And he saw his wife was screaming like his, ah! She didn't have no curlers in her hair when he was there. That's a bad way to have to go to bed. My God, dream said he ate, went to sleep, and dreamed he ate a 150 pound marshmallow. <laughs> he woke up and his pillow was gone that morning. You don't want to go to bed like that. You don't want to go to bed like that. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Uh, don't, don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Wouldn't it? I'm not telling you to do this. But wouldn't it be good if the Lord would lead us? I'm talking about me. What if you said this? 40 days. You know what I can do? I can spend six hours a day on my phone. That's what the average person does. I think I'll give some of that up and spend one hour a day in the prayer closet praying for my teenagers or my daddy or my brother that I'm trying to get to instead of fussing about it. What if we, what, did you know if you spent one hour a day praying for your kid? in a prayer closet at home or at night instead of watching TV and, and on your knees praying for your children, that's 40 hours between now and youth rally? Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't it be something to say, you know what, preacher, instead of just wasting all our money, oh, it's spring, I'm going to take off and load up and go somewhere and blow all my money. Well, I mean, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with enjoying a vacation. No, I'm not saying that's wrong. We, do it our, we do, all do that. But, Let's just say this for everybody that's listening and all you that are listening at home. Don't do stuff like, for heaven's sake, don't let the high gas prices. You know what people do? First thing, they quit, church. First thing. Well, it's so far, preacher. Gas is much. It cost us. Uh, I understand that. It cost me It cost me uh, $12 to drive my car down here and back. And we drive three cars on Sunday. Got three here this morning. We put $275 worth of gas in that little bus yesterday evening to go to Rockingham and back. It's still got some, but I mean, that's a lot of money for gas, just one evening and for a youth trip. I understand. And it might be that some, listen, our bus workers struggle. We got some here this morning. We didn't have enough money to go on bus route yesterday. So what about instead of maybe eating out four times a week, you could cut it down to three. Save $40. Or eating two, cut it to one. You know me, I don't go to expensive restaurants. I just don't. I just don't like them. Uh, I ain't saying you're wrong if you do, if you work hard. But what, what about slipping a little money to the bus workers? Say, here, put some gas. It's $5 a gallon, y'all. And it's, it's over five fifteen for diesel. Uh, and then that doubled what it takes to run each bus. Doubled. Doubled just in the last few weeks and no end in sight. It's amazing. Everybody fusses about it, but listen, you know what we're going to have to do during this time? All of us make the sacrifice we need to make. Carpool, somebody come and get you. I help out the bus workers so they can keep the buses rolling. Let's, let's, 40 days, let's do it. 
wrestle in prayer. And then last, and I'm through. Not only just a waste of time or not a worldliness, but a want of food. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 36. And I'm going to talk about fasting just for a minute. I'll close. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 36. And you'll look at uh, an amazing verse of scripture here. Look at Jeremiah chapter 6 and 36. I'm sorry. Jeremiah 36 and verse 6. Therefore go thou. Everybody looking at it? 6. Therefore go thou and read in the roll. That's the Bible. That was the Old Testament they had then. Which thou hast written from my mouth. The words of the Lord. Read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. In the ears of the people in the Lord's house upon the fasting day. There was a day set apart that they fasted. He said, you do that on the fasting day. Now, fasting is an absolute unknown, unheard of doctrine in most churches. I, I give you a dollar if you can find one sermon on fasting preached in this town in, in five years. Preachers don't preach it. People don't even know what it is. Fasting is a deliberate giving up of physical nourishment, food. It's not, it's not, not going, watching movies, giving up Netflix for two days. You would give that up forever. Amen. Right. And I don't know much about it, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you most of it ain't right. Guarantee it. And TikTok, from, I'll go straight from hell. I'll go back to hell where it come from. That's right. And get mad if you want to. I'm telling you. I'm telling you the truth. It's wicked. It's perverting our kids. It's awful. It's awful. And listen, you do without food, abstaining from physical nourishment to seek God's blessings on your life. The sad thing about it is, parents don't even know what. Why is what she's so upset about, preacher? Have you? Have y'all? We got kids in this town that have been to this church and are now taking pills paid for by the government to turn themselves into a girl. And the government paid for it. And we got Miss Dot over there has to pay $500 a month for her medicine. Her 93 years old paying out of her check and can barely get by. You tell me we don't need prayer? You tell me something ain't messed up in this country this morning? If there's ever been a time, you know, churches are you people use it for excuse, the coronavirus. Well, I, I'm going to wait till this virus dies down. They've been saying that for two years. It ain't going to die down. It will for ele elections over this year, and it'll be back strong in the fall. You can count on it. Read the words of God. You know what fasting will do for you? When you don't eat, it'll lower your, these are the physical benefits, it'll lower your blood pressure, It'll lower your cholesterol. You can automatically lose weight. If you need to lose weight, the best way I know to do it. You know, if I come on TV and I said, I have a plan, and you're like, you ain't going to believe this. Jenny Craig, all this. Uh, is that Jenny Craig? Is that one of them? It just popped in my head. Is that a, a weight loss thing? And it, Nutra, Nutra system, I, I'm going to help you, and you can lose weight, and you're going to bring your blood pressure down, and you're going to get to whatever you want to do, and you're going to be healthier and live longer and everything. And it don't cost you nothing. Call 1-800-BROTHER-DANNY. And I will hook you up. With a, well, Lord, people say, I want it. I want it. It's free. It's free. Yeah. Did you know, it, you know how much money it costs to lose weight? None. You actually save money. How's that for a deal? We say, how do you do it? What? Look, how do I get down these steps? How do I get back up steps? You understand? How do you gain weight? Eating. How do you lose weight? Not eating. It don't take a genius to figure that. I tell you what you want. You want to eat everything you want and still lose weight. Yeah, I'm that way too. I'm the same way, man. I'm a sugar holic, a starch holic, a Pepsi holic. I mean, I mean, I I struggle with it, buddy. I struggle. My flesh struggles. It don't like. Oh, it's easy for you. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. I just made up my mind. The Lord's more important. 
and he's been so good to me. Surely to the Lord, I can push that plate back a little bit for 40 days for his glory. We're belly worshipers, y'all. Them kids, I know, we take kids to camp every year. I go in there and I take that bullhorn thing. Get up! And they look like they're dead. You think they're dead. When they holler and scream in your ear and you don't move, you know, you want to check their pulse. I'll tell you how I get them up. I'll say, they're taking up breakfast in 10 minutes. Here they'll come out there and have their blankets wrapped around them. Come on down there and sit down and get them, them biscuits and stuff. So when it comes to that food, we'll, we'll make arrangements somehow or another. We're, we're going to eat, bless God. If Putin's coming in the side door with a, with a the tank, we're going to get something to eat. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong to eat. I'm just saying, look, y'all, <laughs> let's jerk up on it for 40 days. Some of y'all will go out of here this morning and say, well, you know, I guess he's right. And you ain't going to do one thing I said. That's discouraging. That's discouraging to me. But some of you will say, bless God, preacher, that's right. My kid needs a touch. My family needs a touch. My family, I want my kids to see the manna from heaven fall down. I want God to get all over that youth rally. I want, and we'll do it, and we'll do it. Moses fasted, Esther fasted, Jesus fasted, Paul fasted. We had a girl, some, some girl up in New York texts me, and she says, I've been on a 21-day fast for y'all's youth rally. Don't even go to church here. New York City. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? You say, Brother Danny, I've got hypoglycemia. Well, I ain't your doctor. I ain't your doctor. But it ain't going to hurt you to miss a meal. It ain't going to hurt you to miss a meal. Some people, I understand, have diabetes problems and stuff where you, you know, have to be, but others just use that for an excuse. But I want us to jerk up on it now, y'all. How long has it been since you really felt God's power in your life? How long has it been since you was really excited about going to church and couldn't wait to get there on Sunday morning? How long has it been since you wanted to jump up and give a testimony and witness? How long has it been since you could not wait? You was in the bus ministry. You was in, I can't wait till Saturday. We're going to go knock on doors. How long has it been since you felt like that? My message this morning is let's jerk up on it. 40 days from tomorrow. It'll go by quick. Let's bow our heads for prayer, please. She's coming. Miss Desi's coming. And we're going to do something else. Uh, you can leave them on now for now. We're going to do something else after I pray. God's speaking to your heart here this morning. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you'd speak to every single person here today. Those that are watching from home, online, I pray God get a hold of our heart. Lord, we know there's, there's no rebellion in the universe like the rebellion in a human heart when we refuse to let you work in our life. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive me as a daddy, as a husband, as a pastor, as a, as a preacher, as a as a a citizen, a Christian, a member of society, forgive me. Lord, help me beginning today. Lord, to jerk up on everything and everything that's wicked, everything that comes at us that's wrong or wasting our time. Help us to get back in our prayer closet. Help us, God, to get back on our knees. Oh, God. Oh, God. See our fathers and our mothers and our children sinking down. Brethren, pray. Holy manna will be showered all around. God, I pray you'd help us as we begin this journey here in the next few weeks. Whatever you do, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Just stay right where you are. She's playing softly.